Remember when NASA tried to get the Gemini spacecraft to land on a runway by a paraglider? Well, the other half of that story is that two test pilots built a trainer for the astronauts to learn how to fly the mated Gemini Regalo. And that's what we're talking about today on Vintage Space. In 1961, around the time that NASA was first looking at the Regalo wing as the landing system for the Gemini spacecraft, Milt Thompson was a test pilot working at the Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base on the Dinosaur and X-15 programs. He attended a talk by Francis Regalo on the Regalo wing and what it could possibly do when landing a spacecraft from orbit, and Thompson was fascinated. He was a huge proponent of lifting bodies and loved the idea of a piloted vehicle coming down from space to a runway landing. For Thompson, he saw in the paraglider the perfect proof of concept system to prove that you could have a lifting body return from orbit. He was so fascinated by the system that he wanted to build his own training vehicle just to see what it would be like to actually fly it. He took the request to Paul Bickle, the head of the Flight Research Center, and Bickle denied him. He said that the FRC was way too bogged down with the research programs surrounding the X-15 and the dinosaur to take on a third project, especially something this experimental. Undeterred, Thompson approached a fellow test pilot named Neil Armstrong, and the two of them conspired to build a paraglider research training vehicle themselves. Bickle eventually got wind and decided, instead of letting his pilots die by their own design, that he would sanction the program with a very small budget. The program had a shoestring budget. In just seven weeks, the first vehicle, the Parasev 1, was thrown together for $5,000. There were no engineering blueprints. There were just chalk lines on the floor that gave engineers a rough idea of what the vehicle should look like. It emerged as a sort of open tricycle looking thing with a paraglider wing fixed on top of it that the pilot would control with a central mast. Thompson, as the originator behind the program, was the first to fly the Parasev in January of 1962. He began with very simple tow tests. He wore a helmet in the open vehicle as it was towed behind a truck down the dry lake bed at Edwards Air Force Base. He didn't get enough speed for the wing to generate lift to actually rise off the ground, but he did have a chance to familiarize himself with the controls. Eventually, the tow truck went fast enough that Thompson got about 20 feet off the ground, and from there he could make an untethered landing if he cut the tow line. After gaining confidence from these tow tests, Thompson went on for air tow tests. The Parasev was connected by a tow line to a small aircraft, and that aircraft would tow the Parasev up to about 5,000 feet, at which point Thompson would sever the line and make a landing. That first day of tow test, Thompson made two successful landings, but the control forces were so tough with the center control stick that he actually had to wrap his legs around it to take the strain off his arms. The program was moving forward rapidly enough that other pilots began familiarizing themselves with the vehicle. One of the first was Bruce Peterson, and he managed to crash it on a ground tow test so severely to break the Parasev's nose that another one, the Parasev A1, had to be built. This gave engineers a chance to revise the control system, exchanging the central control column for cables. The Parasev program continued with a large number of successes in 1962 and 1963 as more pilots learned to fly it, including Mercury and Gemini astronaut Gus Grissom and Gemini and Apollo astronaut Neil Armstrong. The Parasev program proved that the mated Gemini Regalo wing was a viable way for pilots to land a spacecraft coming down from orbit, but the Gemini Regalo program just could not keep pace with the Parasev's advances. As 1963 progressed, NASA removed the paraglider slowly but surely from the Gemini program, and ultimately it was never flown. But the Parasev program proved that it maybe could have been had there been more time to develop it. So what do you guys think about the daring of two test pilots building an open training vehicle because they were just curious about it for themselves? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, as well as any questions you have about the paraglider or Parasev programs, because like I said in a previous video, I absolutely love this program and love to talk about it. And of course, if you have questions, comments, or other ideas for future episodes, leave those in the comments as well. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for daily Vintage Space content, and with new videos going up every Friday, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.